In this video, we will clarify some of the common misconceptions regarding the theory of evolution. Have you ever heard that humans evolved from monkeys? Well, that's not exactly what evolution claims. Instead, the theory of evolution states that all life forms on Earth are interconnected and share common ancestors. Imagine a massive, intricate family tree that spans millions of years. Now, instead of individual family members, picture every species on Earth. That's the tree of life. At the roots of this tree, we find our most ancient common ancestors, and as we climb toward the branches, we encounter the myriad of species that have ever existed. In the case of humans and chimpanzees, the best evidence suggests that the line leading to Homo sapiens diverged from the one leading to chimpanzees around six or seven million years ago. This divergence doesn't mean that one day, a chimpanzee gave birth to a human. It signifies a gradual process, where populations change over time, adapting to their environment, and eventually becoming distinct species. The common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees was neither human nor chimpanzee. Picture a population of primates living millions of years ago. They weren't humans or chimpanzees, but a different species altogether. Over time, one group of this species ended up evolving into what we now recognize as humans, while another group evolved into modern chimpanzees. Ever wondered about the existence of missing links or transitional fossils? Well, let's dig into that a bit. You see, there's a common misconception that there are no transitional fossils. However, this largely depends on your understanding of what a transitional fossil really is. Think about it like this. Imagine you're going through an old cemetery, seeking the tombstone of your eighth great-grandparents. The odds of finding their exact tombstone among the many others are pretty slim, right? However, you'd still find tombstones of individuals who were likely related to you, although they represent different lineages that didn't directly lead to you. In the same way, transitional fossils aren't necessarily the direct ancestors of a species, but they are closely related. Let's bring this concept to life with an example. Picture a creature that has characteristics of a whale, but also has tiny legs. Now, it would be rare if this creature itself was a direct ancestor of modern whales. However, if we find such a specimen in the right place and the right time period, we can confidently say that it's closely related to the actual transitional organism. We often refer to these as intermediate fossils. These intermediate fossils are like pieces of a puzzle, helping us to understand the gradual changes that occurred over millions of years. They provide a snapshot into the past, showing us how different species have evolved and adapted over time. So, when we talk about transitional fossils, we're not referring to a direct, step-by-step -step lineage from one species to another. Instead, we're looking at a complex web of related organisms that have changed and evolved over time. In conclusion, rather than being non-existent, transitional fossils are a fascinating and integral part of our understanding of evolution. They provide compelling evidence for the gradual process of evolution over millions of years, helping us to piece together the intricate puzzle of life's history on Earth. So, the existence of transitional fossils provides compelling evidence for the gradual process of evolution over millions of years. Is evolution just historical science and hence can't be tested or confirmed? Let's debunk that. Some say that evolution is merely historical science and therefore can't be put to the test or proven. This claim perpetuates a massive misunderstanding about the nature of science itself. Science comes in many forms, each with its own unique methods and ways of understanding. There's no single authority that can decisively determine what counts as real science and what doesn't. Evolutionary science begins with careful observations. For instance, you might find a bone in a specific layer of rock. This observation then leads to hypotheses about why that bone was found in that particular place. Perhaps it belonged to a species that lived 65 million years ago. As these hypotheses develop, they give rise to predictions of other observations. Following our example, we might predict that we should be able to find similar bones in other rock layers. These hypotheses are then tested by making these new observations. When the new observations align with the predictions, they count as confirming evidence. This doesn't mean absolute proof. Such a thing is rare in any field of science. 
But when the observations differ from the predictions, it means we need to rethink our hypotheses. This process is as scientific as it gets. Now let's bring genetics into the picture. The field of genetics offers even more ways to confirm and test the theory of evolution. By studying genetic variations and similarities across species, we can trace back the lines of evolution and see how different species are related. This not only supports the idea of common ancestry, but also allows us to test and refine our understanding of how species have evolved over time. So, contrary to the misconception, the theory of evolution is not just historical, but is actively tested and confirmed by scientific methods. Is evolution man's word, while creationism is God's word? Let's dive into that. It's a common misconception that evolution is the brainchild of humans, while creationism is the divine word of God. However, this is an oversimplification of both theories. Firstly, it's important to note that evolution is not just the work of men. Many brilliant women have also contributed significantly to our understanding of this scientific theory. So the notion that evolution is man's word is not only incorrect, but also dismissive of the invaluable contributions of women in this field. Now let's talk about creationism. If we claim that creationism, whether it's young earth, old earth or evolutionary creationism, is God's word, we tread on dangerous territory. This claim is perilously close to blasphemy. These theories of origins are interpretations and extrapolations made by humans, not divine revelations. These interpretations, both of evolution and creationism, are based on careful studies and contemplations of respective sources. In the case of evolution, these sources are fossils, genetic data and other forms of physical evidence. For creationism, the source is religious texts, primarily the Bible. It's crucial to understand that none of these theories were handed down from heaven. They are the product of rigorous study, interpretation and sometimes debate. They are human attempts to make sense of our origins and the world around us. So when we say that evolution is man's word and creationism is God's word, we oversimplify and misrepresent both theories. Each theory is a testament to human curiosity and our constant quest for understanding. They represent different perspectives, methodologies and interpretations of the available evidence and texts.